Another day in this test series that has belonged completely to India. A day that Rohit Sharma will remember for a long, long time. A maiden test double ton. He continues to impress in this series, in this big gamble that was played by India to put him at the top of the order. 212 for him, partnership of 267 with uh, Ajinkya Rahane that set up yet another mammoth first inning score for India this series. Just three short of 500 before Virat Kohli declared. And then his seamers uh, bounced out South Africa's openers in the fading light at Ranchi. At the end of uh, day two, again truncated because of bad light, South Africa 488 behind with both openers back in the shed. We're going to discuss what makes Rohit Sharma and what makes these India Indian batsmen click when it comes to home tests with Sanjay Bangar on ESPN Rick Info Match Day. Right, so we start with India's batting. Rohit Sharma, yet again, the master of daddy hundreds in the 50-over format. And he's got a big one in test cricket as well. 529 runs in total in this series for uh, Rohit, which is the most in uh, a test series by an Indian opener since we're in the Sehwag against Pakistan. 544 and on Sehwag's birthday, Rohit Sharma manages to bring in the party with a double ton. You must be so pleased that this is... This experiment or this gamble is not only paid off, but now looks like it's paid off so handsomely. Yeah, yeah I mean, terrific uh, effort by uh, Rohit in all the test matches that he's played and very impressive overall how he has batted for yeah. close to five sessions in each and every test match, barring the second innings or barring, barring the second innings in Vizag and the innings in Pune. But apart from that, he's batted for long periods of time, showed terrific commitment and uh, again, the, the area that he's hitting, I mean, mm -hmm. he, he was just toying with the spinners. He was beating a, a cover point on either side. He was playing the reverse sweep whenever he wanted. He was lofting the ball over the over the deep fielders, yeah. and uh, to get probably 19 sixes in these three test matches is a feat which uh, I don't think will. <laughs> will be overtaken in a long time. It's a world record, yes. Well pointed out by Sanjay Bangar. A world record, amount of sixes he's hit in this three-match test series already. Who knows, maybe there'll be another innings to come. But even if there isn't, uh, fact is Rohit Sharma owns a couple of records after this series is done. The ability to just bat long, uh, carry hundreds even in the 50-over format, seems to be something that you know, a lot of these Indian batsmen are now cultivating. What does it take for a batsman to just convert a hundred into a big hundred? Because we're seeing it more regularly than perhaps a few years back, Sanjay. Uh, that has to do with a with the combination that the Indian team is playing with five batsmen. The batsmen are taking more responsibilities, giving bowlers enough time uh, to bowl bowl the opposition out. But uh, the very fact that uh, they know that they are playing a batsman short and they are making sure that they are batting for longer periods of time and uh, that is something that uh, uh, Virat Kohli has done on a consistent basis and now each and every batsman is taking turns to convert those hundreds into big hundreds. Mm. And as we talk about the effect of these big hundreds is big first hitting scores for India and uh, almost 500 runs again but uh, doesn't negate the fact this is virtually a 500 run score that the opposition uh, would view it as and it's uh, seven times since Jan 2017 that India have scored more than 500 runs at home in a home test in their first innings. Now, we, we tend to look at that and think, oh, you know, toss one, so important and conditions so good for batting. But you pointed out yesterday on our show too, at times, uh, England have posted uh, 400 runs in the series that they were and India had to outscore them even though they were batting second. Again, this is something that's coming more regularly for India. The batting unit overall making sure a big first inning score is posted. Just tell me, take me through the value of that in just uh, a team perspective. From a team perspective, yes, we have a lot of all-rounders lower down the order, but then with the added sense of responsibility that each and every batsman is showing and the hunger in the in the team and the culture that is being followed in the team of being world beaters and achieving, uh, I mean, being in the quest of excellence all yeah. the time, I feel those are the factors which are contributing to such big scores, but not to take anything away from the runs scored at home because at times, uh, there has been a trend wherein runs scored at, at home aren't really given the same amount of respect as runs scored away. But uh, uh, in India, the ball starts to turn from day one, uh, the pace is inconsistent, uh, there are defensive fields to, to, so to score runs on a, such, such a consistent basis, such big runs. Credit to the batsmen because they've done it for India over a consistent period of time. And you talk about this new combination with the added all-rounders. You know, the lower order also, it seems to, regardless of the comfort of the situation they come in, they still seem to want to bat long as well. It's not just a slog. I mean, India lost to Jinka Rani when they were 306. Moroj Sharma fell with the score at 370. It's not like we're seeing collapses after that. Ravindra Jadeja has just become this improved 
proper test batsman. I'm sure you've had uh, enough to uh, deal do with it and sort of speak to him as he's transformed into a proper test batsman. Another very handy score from him. And you have to go back a uh, fair way to find out a, a poor score by Jadeja or at least a poor intention. He seems to have transformed the way he contributes as a batsman in this team. Well, earlier for Saurashtra, he, he always bats at number four. He's mm. got three triple hundreds for them in first class cricket. And we asked him, like, what, what is the difference between bat, going out to bat for Saurashtra and going out to bat for India? And he yeah. said that when he goes, goes out to bat for Saurashtra, he always thinks that the team expects runs of him. Right. So, it's not that he's going to for to start the innings in in hope hmm. but in expectation so i th i just feel that the transformation in him is that now for india whenever he's going into bat he's going higher up the order and that is that means that he's also feels that the team management is expecting runs of him so i feel that is a mental shift and apart from that uh, he's a terrific uh, worker on the games he's always there in the nets uh, trying to hone his skills and he gives a lot of seriousness to his batting as yeah. well. So all that, all those factors combined together, when you do that on a consistent basis, the results follow. Yeah, so translated into success for Ravindra Jadeja, batting promotion in test match cricket almost regular in all formats now. And Ravindra Jadeja, the batsman, continues to shine and impress in uh, test cricket. Uh, what about the batsmen for South Africa? Though it's been hard work for them, they continue to stay out in the field a couple of days and even though it was just 60 overs on the first day or just less than that, again when South Africa's uh, batsmen came out, we just saw a difference in intensity from India's seamers. Now take me through the manner of the dismissals today. What have we learned watching this? Umesh Yadav and Mohamed Shami, just the one over that they've had, they've not taken long to get on the money straight away. But what is it that makes India's fast bowlers click and click so instantly? Well, I mean, uh, we're blessed with a you know, battery of fast bowlers and uh, the kind of work uh, that they've put in in their fitness aspect of the game, they've got stronger, the methods have changed uh, and due credit to our physical trainer, strength and conditional trainer, Shankar Basu, he's yeah. worked a lot, he's changed the fitness culture. Also, a lot of planning goes behind as to how, uh, how to take out uh, the opposition batsmen, so due credit to the bowling coach as well. So, from that perspective, I just feel that uh, uh, South Africans being bounced out. Hmm. Now, there's a totally different uh, aspect to it because uh, South African batsmen are used to playing on bouncier tracks. But playing playing on bouncier wickets in South Africa and playing the short ball in India is totally different because hmm. in India, you don't really know at what pace the ball is going to come after pitching or the extent of bounce it is going to create after pitching. So, you, you would have seen that uh, the first ball to Dean Elgar, yeah. sort of flew from a length. Yes. And uh, it was a totally different height that it flew past. Hmm. Uh, and the second ball that which he got out, he was hoping or he was anticipating that the ball would again bounce the same same height, but it didn't. And in that effort, he sort of got his uh, bat on, onto the onto wicket keeper. So, batting in India is difficult, and it's it's high time that runs scored in India are as valued hmm. as runs scored abroad. I mean, the appreciation for runs scored in India, perhaps, at least from the Indians, tends to be a lot lesser. We tend to value these runs away. So, very interesting that you make that point. Batsmen tend to play short balls very differently in India and abroad. So, what would be your way of sort of recommending to it? What are the South African batsmen guilty of again? What would you want them to do sort of adjust? We look at both wickets today, Elgar and Decock. What would you have had them do? Well, uh, I felt that Decock squared off uh, quite early mm. because uh, he was in no position to play that ball but for Dean Elgar I already said that yeah. uh, the variance in the bounce that uh, did him in but uh, uh, they have to at times when you see cracks on the track because Ranchi, uh, on the Ranchi track you will see a lot of cracks yes. opening up but uh, there are cracks in, per, uh, in, in Perth wicket as well mm. but the key to score runs especially on such cracks is that to have that faith and to have that belief that the track will not disintegrate. Sure. The, all the balls will not really behave in a particular manner mm. which are unplayable. So, I, I feel that one needs to trust the track, mm. not premeditate too much as to how the ball is going to behave. And if you are able to do that, yeah. I think uh, you will survive. And this wicket tends to hold true for a longer period of time. This is something that we saw in the Ranchi test, uh, in the Ranchi test against Australia as yeah. well, wherein India had to bat second. Uh, and Australia had got a mammoth score, but we sort of outscored them. So the key to bat batting on such wickets, wherein 
it seems that it would disintegrate but it plays true for a long period of time let's yeah, we'll see if south africa managed to just watch this little clip of sanjay bangers overnight before they come into bat and try and bat out an entire day tomorrow uh, last word from sanjay of all the indian batsmen you would have spent some time working with was umesh yadav ever one of those batsmen that wanted to spend some time with you because he seemed to be the most entertaining batsman towards the end of the day a test high score for him 31 of 10 that was that was fun to watch i'm not surprised at all because <laughs> again like all other players in this team there's tremendous hunger to improve the skill aspect of each and every player so uh i mean he's hit good sixes today yeah. but some of the earlier sixes that he's hit uh, especially in the afghanistan test match against a quicker bowler yeah. that has been impressive so he's somebody who's got a first class he 100 does, as yes. well so uh, we are very lucky that we have uh, a batting lineup wherein number 9 and number 10 also can make contributions and play as for the needs of the team all right well uh, this conversation is going to carry on with sanjay bangar at the end of day 3 it does look like we're going to have a pattern of uh, of overs being cut short as light fades in ranchi but in they're well and truly ahead after two days of play